We are recording this as Iowa takes the loss to South Carolina. South Carolina wins playing Iowa in the Women's NCAA Championship. 87-75. Um, South Carolina completes the undefeated season. One loss in two years. They get their revenge. Iowa beat them last year to knock them out the tournament. You know, round of applause. Round of applause for the Gamecocks. Round of applause. Shouts out to Dawn Staley. I want to see, I don't know the exact number, how many championships she has, but th at this point, it is getting ridiculous, um, not only with the championships, but with the recruiting as well. Um, Can I say in three? Yeah, three. Yeah, three. 17, 22, and this one right here. Um, yeah, it is It is absolutely insane. Uh, what were your what were some of your main takeaways before we break down some of the numbers on this game? I mean, going into it, I already knew it was a David and Goliath situation. It was a Braun versus Warrior situation in 2018. You had this one team that, you know, yes, they were high in seeding, but heliocentric offense revolved around this one player. Their success live or dies with this one player. And if anyone steps up, then they actually become really dangerous, which over the last two games, they have. Uh, Hannah Stokey has been really good for them. Uh, Kate Martin's are looking like a, a Clay Thompson to her Steph Curry out there. So, you know, there she she's had some help, but um, at the end of the day, they were going going up against a juggernaut, uh, a, a team with the recruiting power that you talked about, a team that had the length, um, and you know, just just have been there, done that before too. So there's continuity there, I would say, at least from from last season. They just ran ran up against a better team, um, and. I know, Omar, you said this was going to be a blowout regardless if it was UConn or Iowa, but the fact that he was even close, I mean, no, they they, they did their best. They did their best. Um, got beat on the boards like crazy. We were looking at it before we started this stream. Um, hold on, let me pull it up again. Um, USC had 57 rebounds. Iowa had 31 rebounds. Oh man, uh, that's 20, <laughs> 24 offensive rebounds to nine, 33 defensive rebounds to twenty-two. Um, yeah, man. It's just it's just hard to beat a team when even when they fuck up on offense, they get another chance because they beat you on the glass. And even if they fuck up again, they can get another shot at it. It's just it's just hard to beat a team like that. Um and at the end of the day, I know we, we like to talk about guards as well. This is a bigger conversation, but um no, we, we like to talk about guards, how flashy they are, how effective they are, and all of that. But I feel like time in and time out, we always see at the end of the day, bro, like basketball is a vertical game. The hype always wins. The the big men, the big women always win. Historically speaking, we're seeing it now with Vic as well. But e even in the guard position, right, like taller guards win. Taller guards is the, is, is the preference. So just another case of that, man. Just another case of that. But go ahead, man. No, yeah. Um. I couldn't remember the exact numbers, but Sue Bird had brought up the second chance points in um, favor of South Carolina and an insane amount, an insane amount of second chance points. I mean, I thought this was the game plan even going into it, but before at like the fourth quarter or whatever, third quarter, um, they just, if Camilla touched the ball down low, it just, I mean, kind of just backed off because it, it was like, we can't really compete. We can't really contest. And the only other option really is to foul, like when we get down there. So, if our hands get on the ball, let her lay it. It's yeah. not. It's it's not too much that we can really be doing right now when she gets her hands on the ball. I mean, congratulations again, Don Staley, great coach, great recruiter. Um, prepared her, prepared her team. Uh, really took the lessons from last year and all the things like that, and and dug deep, and just got better. Got better with recruiting, of course, through recruiting. Got better with people just stepping up. Um, you know, had had some some transfers come in and they they play big minutes. Something that is not common um, for a, a a lot of these college teams, and something that we saw. And you know, maybe UConn could have pulled it out. South Carolina goes nine deep. South Carolina goes nine deep, and that yeah. and that just has to feel overwhelming. Um, and I'm not I'm not joking when I say this. They had one, two, three, four players come off the bench. Uh, Cardiac put it in the chat a minute ago. Thirty to zero when it comes to bench scoring. That was the difference. Thirty zip. Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't know. That. Thirty zip. Uh, Tessa Johnson, which was a guard, 
She had 19 points off the bench. Malaysia for a while, he had nine points. Uh, they also all got a block, except for Tessa Johnson. Um, you know, defensively, they were swarming. Rebounding, they were sw- Like, it's it's hard. And this is college, so that's how it generally works. So, mm-hmm. you know, one team just recruits better or they just have a deeper bench. It's hard to fight your hardest to beat South Carolina's first unit, stay competitive with their first unit, just to have a refreshing more energetic, more scrappy. I would argue their second unit, less disciplined, scrappier. Malaysia for Wiley, she's going for the steal. Oh, she uh, turned around the game to me, in my opinion. Yeah. Because they, yeah. they were struggling scoring. She came in the game and just started scoring like crazy and opened up everyone else. Turned yeah. it up. Ball ball pressure. Um, you know, Ashlyn Watkins, although she did pick up some vows, defense was phenomenal. Blocking a jump shot at the three point line. Like you, you just can't when you get swarmed like that, it felt like they were getting swarmed. Again, like you said, I'm surprised Iowa stayed in it. It felt like Iowa was getting swarmed all night by USC. Like, dead ass. Yeah. I mean, I was in the playback earlier. I was like, <laughs> you said they were going to be blown out. <laughs> um, They still got close to being blown out at some point. I ain't going to lie. Still ended up being a 12-point, uh, you know, 12-point victory at the end of it. But, nah, I mean... Honestly, I thought it, it ended up being a, a better game than I thought. And at that point, that's really all I can ask for. Yeah, I did think it was I think it was better. Um, I did want to touch on some things. If, if Listen, if you came for the, uh, um, again, the USC dick suck because they won. That's where it's going to stop. Ten minutes. You got ten minutes of it. Okay? Hate to be that guy. You got ten minutes. Um... What what happens next for Caitlin? She goes to the W. I mean, the draft is literally in a week. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> crazy. <laughs> that shit is on April fifteenth. I seen that throughout the whole game. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I guess that's what happens next to her. I do think um, when it comes to those legacy conversations, um, I think it was already cemented going into this game. But it, to me, it really cemented it. Like her her legacy has nothing to do with championships. Has nothing to do with even like statistical records that she, that she's breaking. It is the impact that she had on women's basketball. Like the way LeBron talks about Allen Iverson and his impact on the game, it's it's on that type of shit. I'm saying like Allen Iverson never won a championship in his NBA Finals, um, in his NBA career. But the way they talk about him is because of the fact that he uh he had a cultural impact on the game that has just transcended the game itself. And I think Caitlin Clark. What she has done to women's basketball is put it on the map, be, made it mainstream to the point where the last two games has, has been most view, has been the most viewed college games ever. I believe isn't isn't just pure point blank ever. Well, uh, uh, the last game was the most viewed, uh, uh, really the second most viewed sporting event on ESPN ever. The only yeah. thing that made that was a World Cup. Period. Point blank. That's not gendered. That's not sports, you know, specific. That was the second most viewed game played on ESPN, full stop. Soccer is the only thing that beat it out. Yeah, oh. so re- regardless, it doesn't mean, oh, it, it's actually third all the time. I don't give a shit. The the take is still there that she, she put women's basketball on the map. She made it mainstream. She made it cool to pay attention to it. She made it entertaining. Um, and we've been asking for a figure for women's basketball, at least I have, that will actually do that because I, I've always felt like the talent has never been bad to me. Um, it is just, from a marketing perspective, to get the casual involved, to get it interested, you need these storylines that transcend the sport itself. It cannot be just pure basketball because, you know, pe- people want to say they love basketball and just they'll consume anything about it, but no, there's you you love the storylines that come with it. You love the drama that comes with it. You love these goat conversations and debates that come with it. And in comes in this figure that just provides all of that. Um, and we're seeing it right now. And it, I think it also just transcends even her. Because her putting everyone else on, at least for me, it put me on to an Angel Reese in LSU. It put me on to uh, USC and Camila Cardoso. It put me on a page. It put me on to uh, Haley Van Lith and all these other players. So... Um, yeah, man, the impact is there. She's a uh, one of the goats. Yeah, and and when we talk we talk about stimulus packages. 
we have we have to include her in the same conversations of the Magic Johnsons and the Larry Birds, in the same conversations of the Michael Jordans, in the same conversations of the LeBron Jameses. We we just have to. Not only did she put a magnifying glass on herself through her talent, her play, the story, and all this stuff like that, she put a spe- a spectacle or a magnifying glass on the entirety of women's college basketball. And as we got closer to uh, uh, the women's professional game, for good or for bad, depending on how you took that notoriety, took that new level of fame, or took that new attention and spun it up for your good, or maybe you spun it up for your bad. That was on you. However, we can point to, and it's not all Caitlin, but we can point directly to her as being a big contributing factor. Some some other things to note, B-Souls was right about that game being the, the most viewed on the platform besides that soccer game. That that is that is something that's incredible. Um that is something that trend is transcending. Like you can't even imagine to to put that out there. And and I would wonder what these numbers are gonna pull because that's also going to be something uh, uh worth looking at. They moved the Las Vegas Aces game. They they you know they predict Caitlin Clark to uh go to the the WNBA and Las Vegas Aces two time champions last year, um, and so they play the Indiana Fever on July second. The team that Caitlin is is uh, supposed to be going to. Yeah, they move that game from Michelob Ultra Arena, the new arena that they just built, to T Mobile Arena. From twelve hundred to twelve hundred or twelve thousand to twenty thousand. Now, if I'm not mistaken, they've done this before. They've played a game in Mikkel, or T-Mobile Arena before. I think they played some of their finals games there. However, this is a different level. This is this is transcending. Again, this is just another level. I'm not saying it's solely due to her, but the magnitude that that Caitlin Clark has, the 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 waves that came with her throughout women's basketball as a whole cannot be understated enough. Um, there was a woman that I saw an interview. She was saying it was a little boy. He was playing baseball and, you know, he, uh, he had a little 22 necklace on and she said, well, why you had that? What was the 22 for? And he said, well, it's for, it's for me and my number and for Caitlin Clark and for Caitlin Clark. So we just, we, we can't, we can't undermine it. I won't be a part of that crowd in that community. I hate that there is a crowd in the community that undermines it. And I think that's where I want to go next. 